Alright, in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create something like this. Now, this right here is basically a photogrammetry reconstruction of um, part of the deck in my backyard. And of course, garbage can and so forth. Now, I didn't actually focus on anything in the back, just pretty much around this area and the steps. And honestly I didn't take that many pictures didn't get a whole lot of detail I just wanted to see how good of a job this new version of Meshroom would do now here is Meshroom the this is Meshroom 2023 so it's a it's the newest version and came out this year the previous version which is Meshroom 2021 it did the same thing it looks essentially the same but if this one runs more efficiently, it actually creates the uh, reconstruction quicker. Now, if you're unfamiliar with photogrammetry, what photogrammetry is, you take a series of pictures, like in this case. These are the pictures I took. You just take a whole bunch of pictures. You use essentially the same camera settings for each picture. It makes it easier if you do. And you just take pictures of the environment or the objects that you're trying to reconstruct, but from different angles. And in this case, I have 69 pictures. And they're all from different, slightly different angles. And some of them are more close up. So you kind of get the idea. Now, it works better if it's not sunny if it works better if it's like overcast and there are no shadows in this case you know I couldn't like make a whole bunch of clouds so I just kind of winged it but you will see the sun and shadow in the reconstruction texturing because of the sun being out whenever I took these pictures but ideally you wouldn't want the sun out you would want it to be an overcast day all right basically all of those pictures is what it's going to use to create this reconstruction now you just download it and whenever you download it only thing you do is unzip it like right here I already have it unzipped because it's you don't install it whenever I go into it you just have right here mushroom.exe only thing I did was create a shortcut to this and I put it on my desktop now once you have it done, you can open it up in Blender because it creates an OBJ file that you can import in, into Blender and it's actually textured and everything. Now, it's not the best reconstruction because, quite frankly, um, I didn't get nearly enough pictures to do a proper reconstruction. Something like this, like if I was to do this entire deck area, I could easily take... Um, four or five hundred pictures but in this case it only took 69 pictures I think it was 16 it may have been 67 but anyway and if I put this in uh, color view or whatever they call that you can you can see it because it and I it actually applies the texture to it and so forth and if I put it in render view And of course, I actually have a light out here. Let me get out of the camera view. I have a light out here, to, and I have have it so that the uh, shadows are cast in the same direction as the pictures that I took. So it makes it look a little bit better. Now, the way to go about this is very simple like I said you just take pictures and you can take the pictures with uh, your cell phone but it's it looks better and it's more reliable if you take the pictures with like a DSLR camera something where you can set the settings and they don't change something you have manual settings on now your phone you may be able to set the settings manually which is a good thing but with the DSLR you got all the metadata with each individual image and it works better that way all right let me give you an idea 
how to go about doing this and it's very simple and it's for the most part it's completely automated just open up uh, Meshroom once you download it and then you just add images here now these images are obviously going to be the ones that I took with uh, my DSLR I'll move this over select those images and then just drag them into place 67 images and it will go through and start loading up the images and I just downsize this until I see all the images get loaded all right now once you get this point and all the images are loaded just come up here to file and then choose save and then I'm going to go down here to toot where I have the uh, images set and I'm just going to type in toot give that a name for the project and once that's in there all you really have to do because all this stuff is already set up all you have to do is click start now depending on how fast your computer is this could take anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes to several hours now in my case it takes about it, I believe it took about 45 minutes now that's not bad but once you consider the fact that these are all 20 megapixel images that's a lot of data to go through now instead of recording this entire process I'm just going to tell you to note the, the time down here which is 1041 and then I'm going to pause the recording and then come back to it whenever the progress bar gets down to the end so I'll be back with you here in a minute all right it took about 14 or 15 minutes to do this uh, now you will depending on how powerful like I said depending on how powerful your computer is it may take longer or it may take less time now this part of this process does use nearly 100 percent of the cpu and it does utilize the gpus you have in your system i have currently i have a 3080 ti and a 3060 and both of them were being used in the process so with that in mind since it's finished we can kind of look at it and see what what it looks like now this is just a point cloud and you can see the orientation of it is a little off but that's no big deal because we're going to go ahead and close this since we saved it originally it automatically saved it whenever it finished so we can actually close this if we want to now I'm going to go into blender and then import that obj file into blender go up to file and then import and then choose wavefront obj all right, now I just need to navigate to where that is saved. Now this is the same folder I had the images in, which you're not seeing the images because it's looking for OBJ. You go into the cache folder, and then you go into the uh, texturing folder right here. And then into this one, it's going to be a random name. I don't know why they have it buried like this. It seems like it w they would put this file up near the top. But anyway just choose the textured mesh obj and click import now this has a lot of faces and it has some fairly complex uh, texturing so it will take roughly a minute maybe two minutes to import but that depends on again how fast your computer is now I do want you to keep in mind that um, if you're using super high resolution images like I did well not super high but high resolution images which are 20 megapixel it will use a lot of system memory when you're doing the reconstruction using Meshroom like in my case I think I peaked out at about 40 gigabytes of system RAM so or system memory being used now if you was to make the images smaller before doing it it would obviously use a lot less 
system memory but you may not have as good of results and if you're interested in trying this out even with the same Im images that I used in this I will put a link in the description of this video so that you can download the very same images in a zip file all right this should be open in any minute I'm gonna fast forward through the rest of this all right it has finished importing it and keep in mind it once you import it and you save your uh, blend file it, blend file it won't take as long to reopen that blend file uh, blender for some reason is very slow about importing obj files i don't know why i have no clue it's beyond my wheelhouse so as you can see here the orientation of it is a little bit messed up so what i'm going to do i'm going to straighten this out as best i can I'm going to press 1 on the keyboard and make sure that I'm in orthographic view by pressing 5 to go in and out of orthographic view. And when I'm in front view, by pressing 1, I'm just going to rotate this on the x-axis until it's flat. Rotate, x, and then just, I'm kind of just looking at the, the uh, patio right here. Rotate. X and then just adjust it until it's flat. All right, now I'm going to adjust it on the Y axis so that it's straight across this way. Rotate Y. All right, now I'm going to go on top side view and I'm just going to rotate this so that it's basically, you know, straight. Rotate. Z and just for my own sanity I'm gonna move the the ground right here up to the zero point on the Z axis grab Z and then move it to about right there that's just because it would drive me nuts to have ground below Z alright now you can see you even got some little details of the hose over here which the detail isn't isn't very good because quite frankly I didn't focus on that at all mostly focused on the steps the garbage can and stuff around this corner but still didn't do a bad job I mean a lot of the stuff that's in the background didn't focus on at all and then you can click this to see it in textured view. Or see it in rendered view. But check this out the scratches on the side of the garbage can you can see those I mean that's actually there that's part of the that's actually on the garbage can of course you can see a little bit of a mesh issue right here where it doesn't quite have a complete enclosed mesh but that's because it just wasn't enough pictures taken like I said you would you could easily take hundreds of pictures for something like this but and I only took 67 but like I said, if you want to try this out, I will put a link to Meshroom 2023 in the description of this video. And I will put a link to a zip file where you can download all of these images that I took and used for this. That way you can try it out on your system, see how it works. It's actually fun to mess around with. Um, of course, it would work better if you had an object like if I was to have pulled this garbage can out and stuck it in the middle of the driveway and then walked around it taking pictures, I could probably create a very good reconstruction of this in its entirety instead of just, you know, walking around part of it. You know what I mean? But anyway, this is fun to play with. And check out the links in the description if you want to try it out. Guess that's it. Later, people.